Hello and welcome again. So in this uh, series of videos, we will talk about how to implement the stream cipher uh, using Java. Uh, and before we do that, let's recall what what the stream cipher was. So the stream cipher had a, a picture something like this. Um, what you do is you put a sequence of zeros and ones, or a string of zeros and ones, into this block, and you put a key in it. Also, a key. So what happens there is, once I put the key, a random number generator will generate for me a sequence of zeros and ones. And it's going to sort that with the sequence that is coming into the cipher. So this will be the sequence of zeros and ones, and this will generate for me a sequence of zeros and ones, and then sort that with this common sequence here, and you put the output uh, here. So that's basically what the stream cipher was, and and if you don't don't recall what that is, just uh, invite you to go ahead and, and watch the videos of the stream cipher. Now, one of the reasons we spend so much time uh, looking at random number generators is because you see the big part here, and as I, I mentioned this several times, the big part of this is the random number generator because these operations are simple source, simple operation here, of course, uh, printing out. But the result is it's also a simple operation. So the only thing we have to do worry about uh, is this part over here. So how to go about this? Now to implement this in Java, we're gonna mimic what this is. Now the code uh, that you're gonna write is not exactly how the stream cipher is implemented in real life in you, in your cell phone, for example. It's different. Uh, what we're gonna do here is try to mimic what that is, and in some sense, mimic. And it has educational purposes, of course, what we are doing, but this is not exactly how it's implemented. So to be able to do this, so let's let's write down what is the requirements of, of this of this program. So what are the requirements? The requirements are, are this. The input uh, is gonna have two parts. The input was, is gonna be like this. The user should enter a sequence of zeros and ones, and that's gonna be to mimic this part over here where you remember, for example, your voice is translated into a sequence of zeros and ones, so the uh, stream cipher can encrypt it. We're going to ask the user to do that, just to uh, type the sequence of zeros and ones. So that's the one thing that the user should input. The user enters a sequence of zeros and one. And the user should also enter a password in the form of a string. And the reason we're asking this is because if you go back to the picture, let me go back to the picture here. That's the key that you put into the cipher. So this is going to generate a random sequence of zeros and ones. So we ask the user for two things. First, a sequence of zeros and ones that represents this part here. And we also enter a password in the form of a string, for example. And so that password is the one that we're going to use to generate the random uh, sequence of zeros and ones uh, here. So that's what the program requires, these two things. Now, what is the output? The output, of course, is going to be this sequence right here of zeros and ones. Once you sort that with uh, the random sequence of zeros and ones coming from the random number generator and the input from the user. So the output should be a list of zeros and ones that was encrypted from the string of zeros and ones from the user, what I just said, so from the user with the password. And what I mean by that is the password is the one that was going to generate uh, the sequence of zeros and ones and it's going to sort it with with whatever the user put as zeros and ones. So they'll end this, the program should print out uh, that sequence that is encrypted, the sequence of zeros and ones. Now what I'm going to do here is I have some recommendations for you to how to write down this program. Now, whether you follow these recommendations or not, that's up to you. I think this is a good approach. If you think you can do it some other way, still using the inputs and the outputs, and of course doing it in the correct way, at, and sorting the lists and printing out the result, then by all means, please do it. These are your sort of recommendations. If you think this is complicated for you, you can do it some other way. So, so these are my recommendations. My recommendation goes like this. So what we're going to do is, um, first thing, is we're going to read a string of zeros and ones and put it into a list. 
and that's going to be the input from the user. So the user is going to input zeros and ones, and we're going to put it into a list. And why put it into a list? Because I think it's easier that way. Now, if you think it's not easier that way, then you can do it some other way. But you still are required to ask the user for a string of zeros and ones. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to read the password from the user and transform it into a random list of zeros and ones. Now, that's how you actually have to do it. So you take password, which is a string of characters, and transform that into a sequence of zeros and ones of the same length of whatever the user, the same user input. So if the user input a sequence of 10 zeros and ones, then the password should, re should generate a sequence of 10 zeros and ones. So you can sort it bitwise. And that's important. The password should generate the, sta the number of zeros and ones should be equal to the number of zeros and ones that was entered by the user. And the third part will be uh, once I have the lists from one and two, then I'm gonna sort that list from one and two and print the result. Um, so as you can see here, I'm, use, I'm using my data types. It's gonna be all about list. So I'm gonna use a list to store the user input of zeros and ones. And I'm also gonna use a list of pseudo random number generators of zeros and ones and I'm gonna store that into a list as well that is generated from the password. And I'm gonna sort that, and I'll probably print out a list as well. Uh, that's my choice, the choice of making this into a list. Again, as I mentioned, if you think this uh, some other way, which is easier, please by all means go ahead and do it. So so let's go into the first part. So the first part will be to create, to get the sequence of zeros and ones from the user that's gonna mimic, for example, when your voice is translated into a sequen sequence of zeros and ones, and then we're gonna encrypt it. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a scanner, as we did with the previous uh, program, to read the user and store it into a string. So first of all, we're gonna read that from the user and store that into a string uh, of zeros and one. And because I'm choosing to use a list here, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna transform that string into a list of zeros and ones. I mean zeros, integers, and one integers. So that's the, the number one. Again, these are recommendations. If you think that there's something easier in which we can do this, or you can do it, please do it. But of course it has to be correct. And of course the program has to run and it has to compile and it has to do what it's supposed to do. So. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna create a scanner, put whatever the user uh, enters into a string, and I'm assuming that the user is only entering zeros and ones in this case, and I'm gonna transform that into a the string, whatever comes from here, from the scanner, and I'm gonna transform it into a list of zeros and ones. So uh, I'm gonna go to the Eclipse application and I'm gonna show you how that's, that's done. So I'll see you in a little bit. So I'm here in the uh, Eclipse application, and as you can see there, I already uh, typed all the program. What it does is basically reads a string uh, from the user of zeros and ones, and it's gonna transform that into a list of zeros and ones that are integers. So let's look at the parts of this program. So the first part is you have to import several things, and as you can see up there, I have to import the array list, the list, and of course the scanner, because I'm asking, uh, the user for for input, so I have to import the scanner. So that's what you have to import there, so that's an important part. The next thing is, of course, something that you already did in the first programming project, which is define the scanner. And as you can see there, I have uh, my scanner, I call it a scan, you can call it whatever you want, that blue part there that says scan, and you can call it, that's your variable name, and you can call it whatever you want and you say, um, scanner scan equals new scanner and you initialize that scanner the next thing that you have to do is that you have to print out to the user what you want the user to do which is write a sequence of zeros and ones and that's what the next line is so you play pretty much just say exactly the same thing system that out that print line and write a sequence of zeros and ones and then the user will do just that the line right below it and uh, that's the line that's gonna store whatever the uh, user puts in there is going to store it into a string 
And so that's what it does. So I'm gonna define a string and it's called my string. So you can call it whatever you want. And what that string is gonna come from the scan and it's gonna read that from the scanner, from whatever the uh, user is entering there. And we can assume, of course, here that the user is entering uh, zeros and ones in that line. And uh, just to see how the user does, uh, you can just go ahead and print out this line that is there is not necessary. It's just to double check that this is actually working. When you write down your program, you can go ahead and get rid of that system and that out, that print line, the string, it doesn't necessarily there. But just to show you how it works, so you, let's just leave it uh, there. And as I remember what I told you that's that I'm gonna make it uh, everything into lists here. And again, if this is a personal choice. If you think that something else is better for this, uh, please go ahead and do it. So the next line that you see there is the definition of the list. So I'm gonna make a list. And I'm gonna put the sequence of zeros and ones that was entered by the user right in my list. So that line that you see there, uh, you saw this code before when we were talking about random generators. So I'm gonna, call my, my list, I'm gonna just call it my list. Again, you can call it wherever you want, as long as you follow the conventions of Java, naming of variables. And that code, line of code, is the one we saw in random number generator. So it's exactly the same thing. Now, the next line of code that you see there is, pre is probably the most important part of the program. And so that's a for loop. The for loop, what it basically is gonna do is gonna take all the elements of this string one by one, uh, individually. And what it's gonna do is gonna create a list of zeros and ones. So let me go and read that for you. So you have a for loop, of course you initialize your variable i to run through all the elements of the list, let's say from zero. Uh, i less than my string that length, that what it does is saying uh, that is gonna run from zero to the length of my string. Remember my string here, is what the user entered in in the previous uh, line. So that is already stored in memory in the variable my string. And that length, basically what it does is it just computes the length of that string. So it computes how many characters it has over there. And of course, you, you always do I++ there because you have to increase your, your counter. Now the next line here, and this is probably the most important part here, is um, I'm gonna add the zeros and ones to my list. Now I have to make sure that that zero and that one is an integer, not a character. There's a difference between a character that is the zero and there's a diff and the other one is the zero integer. Now, if you find some other way to do this and it's easier, please go ahead and do it. So what I did here was the following thing. So as you look in here, my string that chart at i, what that's gonna do is gonna uh, call the character that is in the ith position of that string. So I have my string, which is called my string, that chart at i is gonna call the ith element in that list. Now, as it is, it's just a character. It's just a zero or it's a one in this case because I'm assuming that the, uh, the user is only entering zeros and ones. So that line that you see highlighted over there is just a character. I have to transform that into a number. So what I do is I cast that into an integer. Okay, so that you can see there's a cast that into an integer. And basically what it's gonna do is gonna give me the ASCII code for whatever that character is. So it gives me the, the ASCII code. Now that minus 48 that you see here is basically the following thing. The ASCII code for zero is 48, and the ASCII code for one is 49. So if I subtract 48, it's gonna give me zero for zero and one for one. Um, so that's why I'm doing that line over there, minus 48, because it's gonna transform that character, which is a zero or a one, it's gonna transform it into the integer zero or the integer one. And as you saw earlier in the, in the videos for for random number generators, my list that add is gonna add whatever is in here, it's gonna add it to the list that I call my list. So once that for loop is done, then all that string of characters, zeros and ones, 
is going to be now in the list that I call my list, and it's going to be a list of integers, zeros, and one. And finally, what we want to do is let's print it out. And of course, you don't have to do this in your program. This is just for me to check that everything is working. So if, if you want to do it in your program, you just don't have to do that. But for this case, let's just do that. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run uh, that program there. So let's run it. So what happens there is, okay, the, the program is asking me for write a sequence of zeros and ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, some sequence there. Let's say something like this. Now, once that is done and I press enter, it's going to put that into a string. And then right after, what it's going to do is going to put that into a list of zeros and ones. So let's see what happens there. So as you can see there, the first line that you see there the, after the, the input, this one right here, is just exactly saying that's just the string. And the next line is the list of zeros and ones, of course, separated by commas, of the integers uh, 1 and the integer 0 in that sequence. So basically what I'm saying is I'm, I'm telling you how to do this actually here. So you just have to follow that that code and then it will do that for you. It will take the string of zeros and ones from the user and put it into a list of zeros and one. And again, if you think that is you can do this a little bit easier and of course in the correct way, uh, please go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go back to the um, uh, to the to writing. And, and let's talk a little bit more about what it comes after this. Once you are ready, you put the uh, user input into, into the list. So I'll see you in a little bit.